How can I serve my empress? As a ranger, you can now enter the command center. There you'll disable Zordon and then destroy the Power Rangers. Jason, the Red Ranger. Zack, the Black Ranger. Kimberly, the Pink Ranger. Billy, the Blue Ranger. And Trini, the Yellow Ranger. Now, prepare to receive the sixth power coin and become my Green Ranger! But Zordon, I might lose out. Would you please take this opportunity to recharge while I place myself into a meditative state? Yes, Zordon. You're right, of course. And now, morph into the Green Ranger! To the fall of Zordon and the destruction of the Power Rangers! To do. Your wish is my command, Empress. Alert! Alert! Hostile takeover! Sweet dreams, Tinny. Alert! 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 How is it possible that you are here? Only one who has a power coin may enter this fortress undetected. Yes, I have the coin and the power, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. So Rita has finally chosen someone to give it to. Right, Zordon. I am her Green Ranger and she is my queen. Tommy, she has you under an evil spell. Let me help. I can save you. Worry about saving yourself, old man. No, you must not do this. Alpha, Alpha 5, wake up. Alpha, you must warn the other Power Rangers. Tommy, stop. You don't know what you're doing. No, I'm losing power. Losing my orientation. Losing contact with your dimension. Tommy, no! <laughs> it is done, my empress. Zordon has been eliminated. And the Power Rangers are next. <laughs> so the scene you just saw was from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And this is a very important scene just for the direction of the show. So I'm going to get into the impact of the scene and why it's important. Then I'll kind of dissect the, the bits and pieces of it. So the Power Rangers were, there were five teenagers from Angel Grove, California, and they were given these uh, Morphin coins and they can morph in the Power Rangers. And every episode they fought off evil. They fought off Rita, the Putty Patrol, Lord Zed, and Goldar. And the show kind of got repetitive. So that's many, a lot of shows are like that in the 90s. They, they weren't very creative. It was always, you know, like Scooby-Doo. Like, think of Scooby-Doo. It was, there's some kind of monster. The monster gets away. They catch the monster at the end, and then they pull the mask off, and it's not a monster. It's a person. And it was like the same thing every episode. And the Power Rangers were like that as well, because the Power Rangers would fight a bad guy. The bad guy would get away. They'd chase down the bad guy by the end of the episode, fight him again, work together as a team, come out victorious, and then... It all changed with Tommy. So they showed the five Power Rangers. You saw Alpha 5 and Zordon. So Kimberly, the Pink Ranger, had a boyfriend. And her boyfriend was Tommy. So the writers took Tommy. And Tommy was put under Rita's spell. Of course, Rita is the evil woman of the Power Rangers. And then now we have a whole different dynamic. Because it's not just the Power Rangers are fighting these monsters. The Power Rangers are having to fight one of their friends who's under a spell. And it's not like he's just a monster with monster powers. He has the exact same powers as the Power Rangers because he has the Morphin Coin. So they have someone that's almost on equal grounds as them. So that makes the whole dynamic more interesting, especially since they don't want to completely defeat him because that's their friend. But going back to the scene, you had Tommy with Rita and... We can laugh at the set now, but back then the set, it was pretty spooky. You had the black curtains in the back. You had the flickering candles and all the the costumes of, of Rita. And then when Tommy went to the command center, that was pretty high tech too. And of course we laugh at it now because it's just string lights. We just saw like the, the white lights, but that those are just string lights. And there was a control panel with all these flashing lights and these crazy dashboards and monitors. And if you think back to the mid-90s, that was high-tech stuff. Now, that's just in everyone's gaming room or man cave. Every every gaming room in, in a house now will have, like, ambient lighting and all these different controls and lights and monitors. So 
So thinking of that now, it's not that exciting. But back then, that was a pretty cool setup, especially when you had Zordon, a talking head in a tube, which was a little weird, but still interesting at the same time. Another thing that to kind of pick apart between now and then with with this scene is whenever people will talk in, in television shows, it would always just go to that person talking and then the next person and the next person. And I think now we have so many different cameras on a set to where it could be two people talking, they zoom in on one person, but then zoom out to include the other person in their reaction. And, and with this set, it's real interesting now that I kind of sit back and dissect it because you can't read his lips because they all have costumes on. And so they have to speak with their arms. And it's like, I got here using this coin. And so they're over-exaggerating everything because you can't read their lips. And then, of course, the monotone talking and there's so much space in between to where in television now, the conversations have more fluidity to them. So it was kind of interesting dissecting that and hearing the big pauses. But between the big pauses is music and there is like no empty space in any of these Power Ranger shows from the 90s it's always like metal guitar whenever there's a fight scene or just scary music whenever that's a spooky scene and there's always something filling the void to where when you look at television today you do have that sound whenever something bad's about to happen but a lot of times televisions and movies today use silence and having a block of silence is a great way to have like anticipation or suspense added into whatever you're doing. Um, looking at the props, of course, we have all the control panels and the pyrotectonics that were everything exploded in the time. That was pretty awesome. You had uh, Tommy had his coin, and then just the, the uniform itself. And then the other prop, the one that I was actually laughing at, was the CD. Whenever he disabled Alpha 5, he put the CD in his back, and I was just laughing at that because. I wonder how many people now would watch that and know that that was a CD. And and then back then, of course, you had like the 15-second no-skip CD player, which was all the rave. So for Tommy to disable Alpha with a CD means that he had high-tech technology in his hand. And then, so the scene, it's it's kind of cool how it can all come back together. Like It's probably been like over 20 years since I've seen that. And, and thinking of it now... It, it didn't only shift the direction of the show. That probably made it to where a lot of kids like myself went out and signed up for martial art classes and got into karate and taekwondo because they wanted to be able to do those cool moves and they wanted to be able to fight off a bad guy. And I'm, I'm really curious how much the Power Rangers boosted the martial arts industry and I'm sure the Ninja Turtles and other things had things to do with that as well. But I know martial arts, at least for me, the Power Rangers was very influential with getting me um, interested in martial arts. And then just that scene as a whole shifted the Power Rangers to where they can keep evolving and then just have all these different forms. And I think there's still a different Power Rangers out right now. I think they just keep wiping out the cast, bringing in a new cast and reinventing the Power Rangers because... It's something that kids just love to watch, and I, I enjoyed watching this scene and, and breaking it down for you, so hopefully this was enjoyable. Thank you very much.